one location to another on this farm crawl. We're now going to Pike Mountain Farm at 3351 Kingwood Pike in Reedsville, West Virginia. We are 0.2 mile away, 0.1 beyond the right. We have made it. Pike Mountain Farm. Preston County Farm Crawl. Parking ahead. Channel 12 News is here. How awesome. Made it to the Pike Farm. They usually come every year, but. And uh, is this your fifth year for the farm crawl? All right. It's our first year, and we're oh, visiting okay. and documenting. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, where are you guys from? Kingwood. No Facebook. Okay. So you have Thank merchandise you and <laughs> pardon me? Yes, I am for YouTube. Are you okay with being on a video? Are you okay with being video? <laughs> so what do we do here? We have tours? Yeah. We can uh, walk you through the field, tell you all about the, the animals. Uh, right. Kind of what we have going on. Okay. Yeah. You want to walk? Well, my mom yep. took it over. Are you? Wanna, <laughs> who wants to lead the tour? Me. Okay. All right. So Pike Mountain Farm. We um, started raising animals in 2018, so relatively new to it, um, and started selling to the public in 2019. Tyler has been farming full time ever since. So. And Tyler is your Tyler's my husband. Your husband? Yep. Uh, I'm Tiffany, and then Towns and Tobias, our sons. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. So we um, we were not farmers prior to that. Uh, we watched a lot of YouTube videos and podcasts and listened to books. And YouTube's amazing. That's right. You can learn anything you want to off of it. Oh, this is where we. We train pigs, so the pigs don't stay here. They come here for pretty much the farm crawl um, as a petting <laughs> uh, attraction, but um, we train them to electric netting. And so once they're trained to that netting, uh, then we start to move them throughout the field down the wood line. Yeah, they move every couple days and uh, they'll get to be about 220 so pounds. They're pretty large, and then uh, they off to the butcher they go. We're gonna get stuck in the fence. That's why we're never gonna do it. So the rest of the fences are electric. We're gonna walk out to the lambs first. It's pretty flat, but it is a little uneven, so just be careful. It's we had 145 yesterday. It's pretty good compared to years past, and um, today it's been a little bit slower. Still a good number. So these are our lambs. These are Katahdin. Is the type of lamb that they are. They're hair sheep, not wool sheep. So um, they're specifically for meat and uh, we we don't have any user rams here on the farm so their moms and dads um, are from a partner farm in Fairmont called Winnow Glen Farm who does all the lambing uh, through the, the winter there. They're born in March, usually. We get them in May, and we'll grow them out to November, and then off to the butcher. Water, mineral, grass is all they need. So through the winter, do you keep any animals? Try to butcher. The only thing that we'll keep this winter um, are the cows, and we have six cows. So try not to do a whole lot in the winter time. We don't have any barns. Um, we don't even have a tractor. We have a skid steer. Has the water affected you in the drought or yeah, the... Yeah, we've definitely seen, you know, the grass isn't growing like we would like it to. Um, but everything's okay. We do keep everything moving on this farm. So that's like one of our um, big things. So the lambs will move every three days. And that just keeps their parasites down. And so that's electric netting that's mobile. 
Mm. And so we just take that netting out, move them to the next paddock, moving them throughout the field. First farm on their way. We're coming from Morgantown. You get slammed right at 10 o'clock on Saturday. 25 people per tour and <laughs> it gets a little wild there. For... We went to the Buffalo yesterday and there was a couple um, that comes from Pittsburgh the last couple years so they can come see the Buffalo. That's a cool experience. Go to the, um, the bison roast that they have in the fall. Oh, she was telling us about it. Yeah fun time but it's just a variety so the chef um, is usually like a West Virginia um, type chef where he's using a lot of like native ingredients and things um, it's different every year so uh, like a big smorgasbord type thing yeah it has been in the past um, I hear that this year it may be more of a plated kind mm -hmm. of dinner as opposed to in the past two years it's been um, more of a buffet but I, I yeah, think she said it's going to be type. more plated this year. We're the music for it. So Tyler and I are bluegrass musicians oh, as well. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. So we'll be, we'll be playing for our dinner that night. <laughs> you have turkeys? We have turkeys. So we have 75 turkeys. They're ready to go to butcher next week. We'll be leaving. Um, I don't know if you can see her under the trailer, but our Great Pyrenees Pretty is also hanging out under there. She is a large guardian dog and mm. takes care of all the poultry that we have on the farm. I, say, I see the dog under there. Yeah, there she comes. Aww. <laughs> so she uh, she hangs out with them, you know, all the time, 24-7. And if a hawk flies over, just goes crazy. Just scares them off. Any kind of predator stays away because she's in there. So hawks, as big as they are, would they bother them? Well, they would swoop in, yeah. We've had chickens in the field before and hawks try to pluck them off. Mm. So a turkey's a little larger, it'd be a lot to handle, but still, you know, we don't want to... Take a chance. Take a chance on a turkey. So they roost in that, you know, device there. Tyler moves that every couple days. Um, and then this netting, again, will move throughout the field. So nothing ever stays in the same spot. Just kind of moving it all around. Poultry we take to Pleasant Valley Poultry, and that is in Sugar Creek, Ohio. It's a three-hour trip mm, okay. um, there, three hours back. But that's the closest processor for our scale um, that we found and that we like. They do ground, they do, you know, all the things that a processor can do. Whereas, you know, if we butchered it on farm, which you can do, and we can do that, we have equipment to butcher on farm. We can only do primal cuts. And so I could only just do basic wings. A processor can do all the fancy stuff oh, okay. and sell it to the public. So we process it there, then we bring it all back frozen and sell it off the farm. Or we have monthly subscriptions for families to where they come here and they pick up their meat box once a month. We also, we're at the Morgantown Farmer's Market twice a month. And they process it and then you you bring it all back. They don't keep it. We bring it all. We it. tell them exactly what we want. Okay. And then we bring it all back here frozen. Okay. We've got a bunch of freezers in the garage and sell That's it. cool. So is this a full-time job for you or you have other jobs? I work full-time at WVU. Um, my husband, he is full-time on the farm. These are chickens. So um, these are mobile chicken tractors. And so my husband... Um, will hook to the front of these, this is the back of it, to the front of it every single morning and move it the length of itself, right? So um, that way the chickens are on fresh pasture every single day mm -hmm. um, from their start. And you can look back, and if you look back where they have been, see how the grass gets greener as you go up, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. it's actually fertilizing and restoring as we move down the field. Mm -hmm. So they'll just keep going. We'll go around the field, um, and then these are Cornish cross meat birds. So from the time that they come here to the time that they're butchered is eight weeks. Huh. And they're about four weeks old now. They've got about three weeks to go, and it'll be a, about a four-pound frozen chicken, whole chicken. So they, they seem to have less feathers. Is that a, a perk of them? Ah, oh, okay. Yeah growing. And you take those to Ohio too to yep. process? the Pleasant Valley Poultry to process. So, um, so, you know, we do, we do three batches of 400 total. So there's 200 in here, 200 in there. And we do that three times a year. Um, we have chicken loading, like nights three times a year where, uh, you know, 
historically it's just been a group of men from our church like to come and help us load up all these birds because mm. it's a lot to, yeah. Um, to catch <laughs> yeah you have to go in at night with red lights on and we've got crates up by the store you can see you put 10 chickens in a crate and then those crates go on the, the flatbed trailer Tyler hauls them off so it's a, it's a fun event that's neat um, the feed is non-GMO. It comes from a place called Ernst Grain out of the and they deliver to us once a month. Yeah. But, you know, comparatively to a, you know, how chicken is, is typically raised in a stationary barn with thousands of chickens we think this is a much better yes. much better life for them and uh, there are always no antibiotics on anything that we have because we move it so frequently uh, grandpa and uncles have um, been cattle farmers both dairy and beef and their farm is just one mile this way so keener cattle company you probably passed that mm -hmm. um that was his grandfather's farm and then circle k is his uncle john so Six cows. All the and all the mamas and we take steers every year. We grow them out for about a year and a half it takes to grow out those steers. Farm about 11 acres. So 24 acres. Yeah. So one yes. year I, I think we had 1,200 chickens on the farm at one time. Lots of in and out. This year we, we threw the feed at them this time of year. These are not Thanksgiving turkeys. Uh -huh. So all these turkeys will be either parted out or ground. The bigger the better right in that situation. Yeah, it's pretty weather for it. Hot oh weather. yeah. Um, Brown bean. 68. Whatever that is. You know what I'm saying. On our way to Foggy Mountain Ranch at 1355 North Preston Highway in Kingwood, 200 acre ranch that offers a variety of activities for horse enthusiasts. And we have arrived, turning off to the left. Above you see the sign, Foggy Mountain Ranch. It was 3 p.m. on Sunday. It was our last stop. When we arrived, we didn't see anyone. Not sure if they did it both days or not. So there's no video on this farm crawl. It looked like an amazing place. We didn't stay long when we didn't see anybody. We had a fantastic time doing the farm crawl. This was our first year. It was amazing. Thanks to everybody who opened their farms to everybody to get to see. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Thank you for watching my video. It means a lot.